This episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast was recorded Saturday after Basketball Without Borders Day 2. This was live from Indianapolis, Indiana. Basketball Without Borders is one of my favorite dates on the basketball calendar. You get 40 of the top international prospects from all over the world, from Africa, Canada, Bosnia, Spain, Australia, all over the world, and they play every All-Star weekend in front of a host of NBA scouts, executives, and agents, and it gives me an opportunity to see some of the future international players for upcoming drafts, and as I've mentioned before, Nikola Topic, T. John Salon, two guys that I think could be lottery picks in the 2024 draft. I watched them last year at Basketball Without Borders in Utah. But here is the episode with me and James recorded live Saturday at Basketball Without Borders in Indianapolis, Indiana, All-Star Weekend. In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, James and I, we are live at Basketball Without Borders day two. Find out our thoughts on guys that have stood out and caught our attention, guys that we may be talking about in the 2025 NBA Draft. Stay tuned. Big, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. We are your source for NBA Draft content five days a week. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe like share because we are your source like i said for nba draft content five days a week it is a saturday i think it's saturday yes you know this this all-star schedule kind of throws things off we got here i got here thursday friday so it's felt like saturday for for at least two or three days now it's cold whatever day it is it is cold that's why we got the coat on it wasn't supposed to snow in the forecast before i left but it snowed it took an hour and a half to get to the Rising Stars game, and uh, I, I go got, for this no more, man. Yeah, even though born and raised in Nebraska, the the snow, I'm done with the snow. I think <laughs> my I think my pass might be revoked. My Midwest pass, man. Yeah, man. I might be a Texan at this point, man. Cool. At least I'm prepared. At least I I got some winter coats and stuff. But they should not have All Star Weekend above the Mason Dixon line. <laughs> So as you can see, we're live here at Basketball Without Borders. This episode won't be too crazy long, but I want to talk about the guys that have stood out over the the, the two days so far. It's a three-day event, but I'll go. I'll let you go first. Who has stood out the most to you the here most? at Basketball Without Borders? All right. If you don't follow me, maybe you should. But I've been tweeting about him, young fella out of Qatar, Hamad Musa. Hey, look, he he's doing everything. He does everything. He's got pace and pick and roll. He's handling the ball. He's initiating the offense. He's knocking catch and shoot threes down. He's not like wowing you with great great athleticism, but he's like really, really crafty. He can handle the ball in tight spaces. And guys 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, that handle the ball like him play for a very long time and make a lot of money doing so. So I think he has generated a lot of buzz for himself if he didn't have any this uh, weekend. Yeah, no, he's been the most impressive player to me by, by far. By far. I know that um, Kaman Mulach, and, and forgive us if we pronounce these names wrong, there's no phonetic spelling no. On, on these names, but the seven, I think he's like 7'2", kid from South Sudan who played in the, the FIBA qualifiers, who a lot of people think is a top five pick in the 2025 NBA draft. He's been good, but Hamad has, has really really stood out to me he's been the best player he's six seven i mean he's passing the ball he's handling the ball he's making open shots his, he's the son of a pro i've heard his dad is a, a legend and you can actually see that he just plays at a different pace he's not playing fast he's not like you said wowing you with like crazy athleticism not playing above the rim but at six seven he can initiate the offense he can play off the ball He's shooting threes. He's making all the right reads and all the right passes. I mean, he's been, like, like I said, the most impressive guy. I think that you're going to start seeing his name buzzing and trending up draft boards for 2025. Everyone we've talked to has been like, yo, who is he? Who is he? And, like, he can play basketball, but you know my favorite thing, Rob, he can hoop, too. Yeah. So, like, he's, he's breaking dudes down on the ISO. Like you said, he's posting up. I mean, he's he's basically checked every single box you would want to see from a wing, especially in this setting. 
Yeah, for my notes, I have good size for a win. He's vocal. And you said something, you didn't say it on camera, but you said something earlier to a, to a, um, an agent. It's like, he looks like he's having fun. Yeah, out it there. Looks, he looks like there's no pressure on him. He's just having fun. He's laughing. And at the same time, he's calling out defenses. He's telling his bigs to be physical because uh, there was a couple plays where Malouch was just bullying guys. He's like, nah, man, you got to check him before so he can't get a couple of these lives. Like, but he looks like the game of basketball is really, really fun to him. And he's enjoying what he's doing. He's dapping guys out, dapping out his teammates. Uh, not really talking a lot of trash, but you can tell, like, this isn't a job to him. And this isn't something that, like, you know, he, he doesn't look like he's under a lot of pressure under this circumstance. Exactly. He's bringing a lot of energy. And, I, and I've been to a, quite a few of these Basketball Outboarders events. There's some guys that feel the pressure because there is NBA personnel here. There is a bunch of scouts. I mean, there's some NBA GMs here. They feel the pressure. He looks like I'm just playing with my, with my boys. He's just very calm and comfortable. He's not forcing shots. He's able to score and do everything that he's been able to do all within the floor of the offense. I'll just read some of my notes that I have on him. Good size for a wing, vocal, good shooting stroke, very good passer. At the minimum, he's a big wing playmaker, but he can, he's comfortable initiating the offense. He has this unique reverse pivot game. And if you've been watching like Luka Doncic this year, he has this move where it looks like the defender's cut off because Luka doesn't have like great vertical pop around the rim. But when he gets stuck, he's able to like spin, reverse, shot fake. And, and turn like a, a a difficult shot into like an easy touch shot. And Hamad has that in his game, just a, a very unique reverse pivot game, floater game. Floaters. He's shooting floaters over seven footers. I mean, he just has this this poise and this presence that, that's pretty unique. Good pace to his game. The, the passing is funny because yesterday I felt like every pass he threw, he had a little, a little pizzazz on it. It was a no look. One hand pass. I mean, I can go on and on. He's been really impressive. Live dribble passing, effortless shooter, finishes with both hands. Again, I can't say enough about him. I think through two days, he's been the best player at this camp. Easy. All right, who else caught your attention? Actually, uh, you know, let's let's talk about let's talk about Malouch. Malouch. All right, big. He's Malouch is big, man. And like you see him next to like six ten. Guys, he's like way bigger than them. Not just taller, but he just he's a physical presence out there. Yep. Um, I want to say Hamad was the only one that kind of like figured him out as far as like when to shoot the floater, but he you could tell he was intimidating. Uh, he caught a couple lobs, big strong guy. Offensively, I didn't see very much from him as far as like posting up and scoring, but like his defensive presence was was definitely felt in the two days that we were here. Yeah, and I, I talked to some some people today. They were like, we're not worried about what he does on the offensive end. What does he look like on the defensive end? They weren't, they weren't here yesterday, so they were asking our opinions on what he did on the defensive end. And I thought he was good on the defensive end yesterday. A lot of it just has to do with just his overall physical presence yes. because of his size. I thought defensively he was better today. I can understand why people really like him and see him as a potential top ten, top five pick next year just because you don't see – guys at that size he moves well but the shooting is something that I think is what may intrigue people because yeah. I thought he was settling for too many threes yesterday I, I do think that with his size he could be a little bit more impactful around the rim as far as just yeah dunking everything and being a little bit more aggressive and assertive but I thought he bailed defenses out shooting threes but you can see the potential as a vertical lob threat and even as a as a floor spacer, but overall, I thought he did good. Yeah, he, I don't think he hurt his stock any. Um, it's just in situations like this, there's could be there's always somebody who's just gonna come out of nowhere. Yeah. But like he was good. I, I was impressed. Like I said, there were he he anchored defenses out here with like no real practice setting. Like you could tell guys were being funneled to him. He was changing shots. He did the Luke Cornet. Uh, jump three feet behind the uh from the rim to try to yeah. to not block the three-point shot but to block the vision of the shooter he made and a guy the dude shoot shot the ball. three ball yeah. over the rim so it worked so he's a big he's a really really big dude and it shows amongst his peers how much more physically developed he is compared to the other kids 
I agree. All right, when we return, we'll talk about a few more prospects, a couple guys from Canada that really stood out and made a name for themselves. Once again, it's Raphael with my brother James. We are here live at Basketball Without Borders. If you are listening on the podcast, Those the audio version, you, you can hear the, the buzzers. There's one right there. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the action going on behind us. Stay tuned. Before we get into the second segment, let's talk about Grammarly. Because no matter the type of work that you do, communication is key. It is very important. All the emails and reports and presentations are equally important as well. And sometimes you need a collaboration to, to get things done. And that is where Grammarly can help. I am a big fan of Grammarly. I use Grammarly when I write for NBABigBoard.com, which I have a mock draft coming up this week. And Grammarly is your AI writing partner that can help you communicate more effectively and efficiently so you can make a bigger impact at work. 96% of Grammarly users report that Grammarly helps them craft more impactful writing. It works across 500,000 apps and websites and it helps it, it, it understands your writing, your context, and Grammarly provides relevant, personalized suggestions. Their tone suggestions help you navigate even the most difficult work conversations. So you can save time with one click and go from editing drafts in hours to just seconds. I have more numbers for you. 93% of Grammarly professionals say that using Grammarly Premium helps them get more work done. So I'm highly suggesting you check it out. I am a Grammarly premium user myself. And Grammarly is the gold standard of responsible AI with 14 years of experience and just about every IT certification under the sun. Grammarly is a secure AI writing partner that helps you and your team get your point across faster. So you can make a bigger impact at work by using Grammarly. All you have to do is sign up at Grammarly.com slash podcast. That is Grammarly, G-R-A-M. M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash podcast. All right, second segment. Another guy that stood out to me, and forgive me if I butcher this name. Please forgive us. We had no phonetical spelling. Efioso Oliagu. Oliagu. I'm going to say Oliagu because it looks like Ike Diagu. Oliagu. He is intriguing. He's listed at 6'6". Strong, like probably the most physically developed player. Wing. In this, yeah, wing. But even like his muscles, man, dude looks like he's, he looks like, I don't even know, he looks like Lou Dort. I mean, <laughs> Desmond Bain build. He was yoked. He's definitely yoked. Like, I built like Desmond Bain with longer arms, but an explosive, explosive athlete. Like the first time I watched him that, that caught my attention he knocked down the three and I was like okay maybe he can shoot but then it was just the athletic plays that he made throughout the, the first two days whether it was blocking a shot a dunk attempt above the rim just getting steals I mean he was everywhere on the defensive end he's someone that you can visualize down the line you know if he's an NBA player right go out there make the star players life miserable because at six 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 he has the size and the physical tools, but he is strong and athletic. He can move his feet. I could see him as a guy that really impresses teams looking for like a 3 and D cutter defensive dif disruptor, but he's a great transition finisher, great cutter. He was dunking everything. Every opportunity he had to throw down a dunk, he threw it down. Yeah, I mean, it was like vicious above the rim dunks like he was really impressive yeah i would say um i don't i don't think i saw him make any jump shots today but also he's on a team with uh two other guys where you know i guess he he understood his role he understood his assignment and he stayed within himself so excuse me like he did a couple things off the dribble but for the most part he was playing off of guys he was slashing he was dunking getting out in transition and just being a great athlete he was guarding he switched everything, and he guarded a lot of fours. And really the only five out here that was just probably too big for him was uh, Kaluch, Malouch. Malouch, Malouch, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, and I, I think he is a guy whose game kind of translates to what NBA teams are looking for as far as just an athletic wing that can defend, block shots, get steals, knock down open shots. It's, the jump shot is still a work in progress. 
but I think he has a very transferable or translatable skill set to to be like an NBA complimentary player. Yeah, I agree. Let's talk about another guy that a lot of people are talking about from Canada. They think that he could be one of the next Canadians to make a splash. William Riley. What did you think about Will William Riley? Look, William Riley is not gun shy. I can tell <laughs> no, you that. Look, if the ball touched his hands, it was probably going up. And he's he's really really thin. Uh, I think when he like figures it out in a couple years, it'll ultimately be like catching and shooting the ball because he can shoot. He's just right now. I think he was trying to uh, he was trying to get loose, if that makes sense, instead of just playing and letting the game to him yep. come to him. But I understand because you know this is a this is a setting where you know the the cream is going to rise to the top. But, like, ultimately his shot selection probably needs to get better, but he does have a lot of talent. I I heard the funniest comparison. Somebody I spoke with compared him to J.R. Smith. I see it. And they were saying he's like J.R. Smith because he can shoot you out of games or he can shoot you in games, but the confidence and the shooting is there. Plays with a little chip on his shoulder, has a little, yeah. has a little toughness to him. I think for him, he has the positional size, he has the tools, just the shot selection may need to be honed in a little bit. He's more of a, I, I would say he's more of a scorer than a shooter, but yes. you can't like leave him open. But I thought he did some good things to, to, to help himself this weekend. I agree. All right, when we return, I want to wrap it up talking about a, a few other prospects that, that caught my attention, most notably, a Greek point guard that I've been watching and paying attention to him for a little while, and I thought this weekend was the best that, that he's played, and that is Neoclis Avdalis. Avdalis. All right, when we return, I'll talk about <laughs> Neoclis Avdalis and a few more prospects. Stay tuned. All right, before we get into the last segment, I want to ask you, the listener, are you the type of driver that likes to push things a little further? Do you ever wonder what adventure is around the corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. And my favorite one is the Nissan Pathfinder, the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. It has room to seat up to eight people. It has an expansive cargo capacity and an advanced available 4x4 capability. It also has 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing. So when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. So go out and check out the Nissan Pathfinder and go find your next big adventure. Check it out at shopnissanusa.com. All right, last segment, and this is only day two. There's still another day. We won't have the time to cover every prospect. So if there's somebody that we missed, I'll write about it on NBA Big Board. I mean, there's it's a lot of guys. It's like 40 guys here, 40 yeah. guys here. And they're all like high-level players. I think at the minimum, they're all power. Not all, but I would say 80% are like at the minimum power five Man. or power six D1 College guys. College coaches, they – Definitely to tune in to this podcast, if nothing else, because there's a lot of a lot of guys here that can help out some programs. Yep. All right, let's talk about Neoclis Avdalis. If I'm not mistaken, and I don't have my notes in front of me, I think he may have been like one of the youngest players ever to play in a EuroLeague game. I think he was like 15 playing for Panathinaikos in Greece. There were some rumblings that his, his development was starting to peak out, that he wasn't getting better, that he wasn't developing at the at the pace. I think some of that was unfair because he played in the Euro League at so young and I, and I, again I could be wrong, but they were talking I want to say like he was younger than Luka Doncic, which is unfair comparison. And I think he's played well, but the the chatter was that his development has slowed down. Well, I thought out here he showed why there were so many people that liked him early on. He played with a, a different level of freedom here that I haven't really seen in Greece. He's a big point guard. Do you, you think could also, he's a point guard or a playmaking wing? I think he's I think he's a point. I, I think he's a point because he's to me he's best with the ball in his hands. And you could to me you could tell that 
that he's had an advanced level of competition. Like he made a lot of the right reads, he hit cutters, has a little flash and flair to his game through like no look passes. I thought he was impressive, but the size and the passing and the ability to get downhill, I thought, is what stood out to me. Yeah, he's a very, very good passer, especially at 6'7". Um, operates in pick and roll very well. Uh, yeah, he, he made plays all around the floor. He shot the ball pretty well, too. I was I had wrote him down before even watching him, just watching like drills as somebody to keep an eye out for, and he definitely delivered. Yeah, I think he may have reintroduced himself to people that kind of wrote him off as the guy that, Again, like they say, maybe the development has stalled a little bit. But I think he's a point. Why, why would you think he's a wing? Um, just because when I think of a point, I'm thinking on the ball the entire game. You're out there, and they build around you. You're the primary playmaker. I think he's a playmaking wing. I think he can initiate offense but also play off the ball a lot too. Mm -hmm. Just because, I mean, he's 6'7", and I don't – I think at 6'7", at that level, the playmaker, the point guards at a 6'7", are like LaMelo and Luka. And I don't think he's obviously not that kind of talent yep. as far as being like your full-time point guard. Well, what's interesting is like last year at this same exact event, it was in Salt Lake City, Nikola Tokic was there. Okay. He was good, but he didn't like stand out, stand out. Elliot Cadeau was probably the best point guard there. Matas Bozelis won MVP. But... Whatever happened with Taupich after he left basketball at our borders, I mean, the way he dominated the Adidas Next Generation tournament to the FIBA play in the summer, it's like he left with a different level of confidence. Mm -hmm. And I see some similarities between Avdalis and Taupich as far as bigger point guards that can run plays, make the, the right pass out of pick and roll. Avdalis was aggressive, not necessarily as aggressive getting downhill as Taupich was, but again, Taupich wasn't the standout last year. And every year that I've watched Basketball Without Borders, the guys that have stood out the most didn't end up being the best prospects. Like, for example, Josh Giddy was good in 2020, but he was a lottery pick. Right. Last year, like I said, um, Topic was good. I don't even know if he made the top five, but now he's going to be a top five pick. Right. So I think Avdalis could – have a Nikola Topic type surprising rise. It wouldn't shock me. That's fair. All right, who do you want to talk about next? Hey, man, look, I think college coaches should be all over this gentleman out of Puerto Rico. Again, I, I apologize if I got the last name, the maternal name, paternal name wrong here. So I'm going to just go with what they put on the sheet. Alejandro Avalis Valentine out of Puerto Rico. All right, 6'8 big and... It's kind of hard to describe. He was just good. Like, he hit catch-and-shoot threes. He passed the ball very well. Uh, he he had touch in the paint. Like, he wasn't wowing you with athleticism, but he was a high – he is a high IQ player, and, like, he just does a little bit of everything. And, like, I just like him a lot. Like, uh, I think they were trying to put some smaller guys on him. He would post them up, pick it and pop, and he would shoot threes. He hit threes off the catch. Like, he looked really – really good and I feel like college coaches like he would be perfect for a power five school okay what position would you say he is I think he's a four four like a college four yeah I think he's a six eight four yeah yep skilled guy there's another guy I want to talk about I've been watching for a little while Ben Seraph from Israel plays for I know he played for Maccabi Tel Aviv a few years back similar to Avdalis a big point guard his name has been kind of buzzing as a potential. I know he's one of the top players in the 20 or 2006 generation in Europe. I thought he played good today. I don't know if he's an NBA player, but I do think that he is a, a power five college player if he chooses to go that route. But I think he has a really good situation in Israel. He's the guy over there. Mm -hmm. So I, it'll be interesting to see if he decides to come over, but I think the situation is good. But if you're a Power 5 school, that's a name that I think you should look out, at least try to recruit. I got another one for you. Again, apologize, apologies if the last name gets slaughtered. I'm sorry. Sean Abayev, 6'8", small forward, very left-handed. Yep. Very, very, very good shooter. Uh, he can drill a little bit, but his best... To me, like long term, is shooting the ball. 
Yeah, the positional size, the shooting, made some athletic plays in transition. Yeah. He's got some talent. He's got some talent. The shot selection may need to improve. The decision making was a little shaky as far as making decisions off the ball, but I thought he showed some flashes of it being wasn't, able to It make wasn't passes. consistent. Yeah. 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 He he made some plays, but there's sometimes he got too deep into into traffic. But if he got it a shot, if he got it to right here, Roth, and it was a clean look, it basically went in. Yeah, the size and athleticism were impressive. And again, that's all you're really looking for is at least from the NBA perspective, does this guy have NBA positional size? Does he have a skill set that he could hang his hat on? And then what can he possibly add to his game over the next couple of years? And so he is definitely a, a name that I would like to remember and, and keep out on, keep an eye out on. Is there anybody else? Yeah, um, Aginaldo Neto okay. out of Angola. He's about 6'1". Just, oh, yeah. yeah, scoring yeah. guard. And he, he defends on the ball, off the ball. He can initiate some. Uh, I think he's more of a, a two, maybe possibly a combo. But dribble jumpers, at least yesterday, he it looked like he made all of them. And he's tough. He competes. Very feisty. Uh, another one that I have for you real quick, Savo Drezic out of Serbia. Mm -hmm. Very good passer in the pick and roll. Like very, very good. Manipulates. The role man, uh, the role, the big defender. He had lob plays. No, he was he was a very good passer too. What did you think of? And again, forgive me if I mispronounce his name. The French prospect Noah. I want to say a, a, a singe, a singe. Yeah, look, he passes the eye test. Yep. What is he? Six nine. Yes, they got him at six nine. He's really thin. Yeah. But the NBA. Positional size at a wing is, is what I really yeah. like. Uh, he has some talent. I think he's a, you know, a few years away. But you can see, like, the, the skill. He can put the ball on the ground some. Mm -hmm. He just has to, you know, get a little strong. I think he might be the youngest one here, too. Like, he just turned 17, I want to say. Yeah, December. I think he has a, a December birthday, December 2006. It's kind of crazy, crazy to be talking about. Yeah. December 2 2006. Yeah. Prospects born in 2006. But that is where we are. Yes. In 2000. I remember I was at All Star Weekend 2006. Man, I was getting ready to graduate from college. It bro. was in Houston. I remember because I, I was able to snag the rare All Star Edition Air Force Ones in Houston. I got another one for you, Roth. David Merkovich out of Montenegro. Oh, number 51. Yeah. All right, this guy does not pass the eye test at all. Had his socks pulled up to, to his knees. <laughs> Big body, like wasn't athletic at all. And I remember talking to an assistant GM, and he was asking me who I liked. And I, and, uh, I told him he was like number 51. He didn't know his name, but he was like number 51. He was like, he, he's tough. So I started paying more attention to him. And it's like, you know what? He got some stuff to his game. Man, look, he was throwing behind the back passes to, and post entries. Like, picking and popping, he was catching. He was knocking down picking pops. He's a high IQ basketball yep. player. Like, his frame will remind you of pre-NBA Alperin Shingun. Kind of chubby. Oh. Well, they're cutting the lights off. <laughs> that means they want us to get out of here. Man, we're not going to argue with them. Well, once again, it's Rafael Barlow with my brother James. This episode is kind of ending a little bit abruptly. If you're watching on YouTube, you can probably only see our silhouettes because they want us to get out of here. It's crazy. This ball still bouncing. Once again, it's Rafael with my brother James. And we are out of here. Yeah, there we go.